chapter five, Worms, Snakes, and Periwinkles. That night, flipping around in low, Petra was more and more amazed. So this is the book that she found that was kind of didn't make any sense. It was unusual. She had never seen a book like this. It was, first of all, peppered with quotes from journals and newspapers around the world. There was the London Times, the Quebec Daily Mercury, the New Zealand Times, the Woodbury Daily Times, and the New York, the New York American, the Gentleman's Magazine, the Ceylon Observer. The list went on and on. There were hundreds of stories of bizarre happenings, many of them similar. Venomous snakes dropped into backyards in Oxfordshire, England. Red and brown worms fell with snowflakes in Sweden. Bushels of periwinkles fell from the sky on Cromer Gardens Road outside Worcester, England. Luminous floating lights traveled slowly over open land in North Carolina and in Norfolk, England. Wild animals turned up where they shouldn't have. People disappeared and then were found far away, disoriented and confused. Disoriented means when you don't know uh, where you are. There were crashes and explosions that no one could explain. Fort had apparently spent 27 years going through old newspapers in libraries. So Fort is the author of the book. Going through old newspapers in libraries, he had copied out thousands of articles about unexplained going-ons. It is the profound conviction of most of us that there never has been a shower of living things. A shower meaning uh, like a rainstorm where living things are coming down. But some of us have been educated by surprises out of much that we were absolutely sure of. And the quotes here means that he's saying that you used to be absolutely sure, but then maybe something happened to make you not so sure. Petra read this twice and turned a few pages. I have never heard of any standard in any religion, philosophy, science, or complication of household affairs that could not be made to fit any requirement. We fit standards to judgments or break any law that it pleases us to break. We have conclusions, which are the product of senility, or incompetence, or credulity. Senility is um, like when you're old and you can't um, understand things anymore. And incompetence is when you're not very good at, at things. And then argue from them to premises. We forget this process and then argue from the premises, thinking we began there. Petra struggled with this language and had to look up word, the words credulity and premises. Rereading each sentence in pieces, she began to get a grip on what Fort was saying. Depending on how you looked at things, your world could change completely. His thought was that most people bent over backward to fit everything that happened to them into something they could understand. In other words, People sometimes twisted what was actually in front of them to fit what they thought should be there, never even realizing they were doing it. People liked to see what they were supposed to see and find what they were supposed to find. It was quite an idea. And then, see London newspapers, August 18th and 19th, 1921. Innumerable little frogs that appeared during a thunderstorm upon the 17th in the streets of the northern part of London. Farther down, there have been repetitions of these arrivals. There is an account in the London Daily News, September 5th, 1922, of little toads, which for two days had been dropping from the sky at the chalon sur saone France. Could this be true? Why wasn't more time in school spent studying things that were unknown or not understood, instead of things that had already been discovered and explained? Miss Hussey always asked for their ideas. 
Wouldn't it be great to go digging for weird facts like Charles Fort did? Try to piece together meaning behind events that didn't seem to fit? And why wasn't this book a piece of art? She grabbed her notebook and began to write. This object is hard on the outside and bendable on the inside. It is the color of an unripe raspberry and weighs about as much as a pair of blue jeans. It smells like a closet in an old house and it is an ancient shape. It holds things that are hard to believe. There are liver, living creatures falling like rain and objects that float by themselves. People vanish and reappear. It is made of substances that once grew, that once bent in the wind and felt the night air. It is older than trips to the moon or computers or stereo systems or television. Our grandparents might have seen it new when they were young. There was a woman's name faded in faded brown ink inside the cover. Petra wondered who else had loved this book and why it had ended up outside Powell's. Why had it been thrown away? She would never lose it, not ever. Before closing this, the book, she looked again for that one terrific sentence. We shall pick up an existence by its frogs. So this is the assignment that Petra is writing about what is art. And so she's decided that this book would be her object that could be art. Hours later, under a, silver, a sliver of moon, Petra was almost asleep. As she rolled over, squashing her pillow into a position on top of her arm, a strange thing happened. Although her eyes were closed, she seemed to be looking at a young woman. This person was old fashioned. She was dressed in a yellow jacket that had dappled fur on the edges, and her hair was pulled back tightly with shiny ribbons. Dangly earrings, perhaps pearls, caught the light. She had been sitting at a table and writing. Something had interrupted her. Quill pen in hand, she had paused to look up. The woman was gazing directly into Petra's eyes. Her expression was knowing, filled with kindness and interest. And she had the look of someone who understood without being told. So I think this is the picture that's in front of, in Petra's mind. So take a look at this while I read and then pause and look at it again and see if there's any clues that you see. Petra found herself soaking up every detail of the image. Although the room was dark, light touched the metal fastenings on a wooden box, a fold of old of blue cloth on the table, the curve of the woman's forehead, the creamy lemon of her jacket. This was a calm, deliberate world, a world where dreams were real and each syllable held the light like a pearl. It was a writer's world and Petra was inside it. And then, as suddenly as she had peer, appeared, the woman began to fade from Petra's mind. As this happen, happened, Petra felt recognized as if this person knew who she, Petra Andali, was. It was a shocking feeling, exhilarating, shivery, true, and somehow inevitable. Inevitable means it's gonna happen no matter what. As if things had always been this way. Wide awake now, Petra thought of Charles Fort. Was he responsible for the woman's visit? Had he brought them together? Educated by surprises, Fort understood what Petra had often felt. There is much more to be uncovered about the world than most people think. If she'd had any idea how much more, Petra would, wouldn't have slept at all that night. So we wonder what he means by that. Next is chapter six.